Here's what Jurgen Klopp had to say about the fitness of Thiago on Wednesday's press conference and asked whether he'd be involved. He said there's a good chance it's surprisingly good. After the game on Sunday, I was not really positive about it, but we got news that night already that it doesn't look that bad, and from there we went. Now we'll see. I can imagine everybody thinks now, three days before a game, cannot train, but we just have to be sure we do the right stuff in the right moment, and that's what we try. So, big boost, and the numbers show it. They've won 84% of their games at Thiago starts compared to 68% when he doesn't. For more on this situation, let's send it out now to Paris with Alexis Nunes and the crew. Thanks so much, Kay. And much like you said that Thiago makes Liverpool better, these two guys make me better. I'm back with Robbo, but look, we have Sir Frank LeBeouf joining us. I'm saying Sir because... You've got that little red thing on your jacket and it means something, right? Yes, I'm a knight of the Republic. Thank you for Mr. Chirac. Uh, but yes, I would be English, you would have to call me Sir. But the only Sir is Stuart Ian Robson. Robson. Yeah. It's S-I-R. Literally Stuart's initials. Um, but the truth is we're here, Frank. We're finally in your country. Champions League week. Uh, the city seems like it's buzzing. Is it buzzing more than usual for the football? It is, and uh, welcome to my country. And uh, it's true that when you have the chance to, for a beautiful heaven like the Champions League final is, um, yeah, everybody is uh, looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to, to receiving the world of medias and, uh, and also to, uh, to be watching that fantastic game. And uh, we're all looking forward for that. And uh, we, we're very much, very much happy. We are massively excited for this yeah. one. And I think Liverpool fans in the last 24 hours, as you alluded to, Kate, are much more excited because there is some news after Jurgen Klopp's press conference that Thiago Alcantara could possibly be fit enough mm -hmm. to play in this final, guys. And if he is not even 100% fit, but at least a little bit fit, surely he has to start. Uh, if he's not fully fit, he doesn't start. It's as simple as that. You can't be a player... But he's that X-Factor player for them, isn't he? But he won't be the X-Factor if he can't run or he can't get around the pitch, <laughs> or he can't manipulate the ball and get away from people. You have to be, not maybe 100% fit, but at least 90% fit. And I got from the comments that Jurgen Klopp made, he might play some part in the game. Mm. That's what he said. He didn't say he was going to start. He said he might play some part in the game. The problem, the problem with, with that is that the coach is going to ask uh, uh, Chago, how do you feel? Yeah. Mm. And he's going to lie. Because he, wants, he, to he play. wants to play, he wants to play, and everybody will be will do the same. I will do mm. the same, and, and Stuart as 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 well. So, the the the, the truth of that will not know. We, we won't know. We will know while he, while he was he will be playing, and and uh, and when he's gonna play, we're gonna see if he's hundred percent or not. Because a player like that, you see immediately if he is a factor, is the X factor or not. Because we've seen it before. Diego Costa playing for Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid. Everyone, is he going to be fit? Is he not going to be fit? He comes off after 10 minutes. Harry Kane for Spurs against Liverpool. Couldn't run. Yeah. And so it was a waste of time playing him up front. He can't do that with Thiago if he's not fully fit. How important, though, overall, has he been for Liverpool? Has he made them even better probably than they were before? Yes, because he's now the passer of the ball in midfield. They had a lot of energy in midfield when Wijnaldum was playing. He wasn't a great passer of the ball, but he was a player that got into the box. Henderson's obviously high work rate. Cater's got high work rate. But Thiago's the player that can manipulate the ball. He can switch the play. He can play clever little balls around the corner. So he does add that little bit extra for Liverpool, I would say. He's a fantastic player. He, he makes a difference. You know, the, the Is there the most important player now in recent times, at least in the last couple of months? I weeks? don't like to go in those individual you know, mm. compliments in a mm. way that uh, it's, uh, it's a teamwork. And, uh, but he makes something special. But don't forget Fabinho. Yeah. Fabinho, uh, he, he works for, in fact, Trent Alexander-Arnold, you know, when he goes <laughs> a little bit too, uh, too, 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 forward. Too, too forward. Or even Robertson. That's the guy that I love the most. But when you watch... Chago, Chago Alcantara, you love football. Yes. He brings something special. And I remember halfway through the season in December before the Madrid derby, um, we got to speak to Tony Kroos. I spoke to Tony Kroos mm. and he actually said that he's a bit surprised that they were that far ahead in La Liga mm. at the time <laughs> because he said, honestly, I don't think we've been playing our best at all, mm. maybe even half our best, but some way, somehow, we keep getting through. Does that give Madrid kind of the edge in going this one or can you see how Liverpool can overwhelm them? Because the truth is, Madrid has struggled a lot this season, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't show with how they've won La Liga. Chelsea, not this season, but the last season, showed how to play against Real Madrid when they outpowered them, they outran them, they found spaces in behind uh, Real Madrid's midfield. 
And I thought in most of the Champions League games against PSG, against Man City, that would happen again. Yep. But they've somehow found a way of keeping in the game and then winning it. I think Liverpool, if they are, and we talk about Fabinho and Thiago being fully fit and they play at a high tempo and they keep sticking the ball in behind Real Madrid, in my view, they're still the better team of the two. And I mean, I've sat, of course, beside the likes of Pablo Zabaleta and Luis Garcia a lot of times in La Liga watching Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. They go a goal behind. Everyone starts to panic. I go, oh, no, this could be a juicy one. And they look at me and they say, I've seen this script before. This is something mm. that Real thrive on. But you look at that match with PSG, it was two legs. You look at the match with Chelsea, that was also two legs. Frank, this is only one match. There's no two legs. There's very little room for error. So are they running the risk of Liverpool wearing them down? Of course, because because I think, and Tony Cross confirmed what I think, and me, Madrid fans really think that I hate Real Madrid. But <laughs> you, should, you told me. No, you no, told, you told you you no, no, I, you I don't. You can say he's still angry that no, they knocked I, Chelsea out. No, 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 because, because you know, uh, uh, to get the contrary of what you're saying, in one game, they did the job at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. And, mm. and, and they played fantastically against, uh, against Chelsea the first leg. Well, I guess Chelsea was really horrendous that night. But, yeah. but sincerely, I think they have the spirit to do whatever it takes, even for one game. And uh, and Liverpool players, they know that. Even if they lead 1-0 or 2-0, they mm. know that at a certain point, because of the face they have, the Real Madrid players, they might come back. Mm. So you have to respect them for that, because they don't, they don't do it randomly once, yeah. but they did three times. And, and, and in a way that everybody and even the players, <laughs> Real Madrid players, mm. believe that it could go that far. It's fantastic what they showed and it's part of the game. The, the, the psychological, aspect, uh, psychological aspect of the game is the most important thing. Mm. And you play your final. You don't play well in the final. Yeah. You win it or you lose it. And everybody will remember that you won it or you lost it. Mm. That's what they do. And I think they won it 13 times. Even if Liverpool won it six times, I think they have... They, they know, know how to win They this. know how to win it. Frank, this is your forte. There's a certain man there called Karim Benzema. Mm. If you're going in and you have to mark him, how do you stop him? Because this is a man with experience and he's clearly having the best season of his life. How do you stop someone like you this? Know, that question has been uh, asked to me uh, in 98 <laughs> about Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, well, you know, let's well, pray that it. it works. You know, and, uh, <laughs> it, it did work. And sometimes I think you can have a good day and you have to make sure that you give a big pressure on him. Uh, the talent is there. And you know that at some point you will need your friends to help you out. Because yeah. you, uh, one against one, against a player like that, you're going to suffer. He's going to have the ball and at one point he's going to take you on. So you have to respect that, you have to accept that, and you have to make sure that your friend is going to be there covering you. But you have to be very close to him. Uh, you have to give him a big pressure. You have to, to scare him in a good way. Huh? The only problem Maybe is put his beard a little bit. I was going to say, how do you scare someone like Karen Benzema? <laughs> the only problem with Benzema is he's difficult to pick up because he doesn't yeah. stay as a centre forward. Sure. He comes short, he'll go into midfield. So the players that have got to be alert are the holding midfield player for Liverpool, whether it's Fabinho, as you talked about, he's got to make sure. Because what he does, he sets up the play and he almost jogs into the box. So when the cutback comes, he's free and he, he, he scores. And Michel, that's what Benzema's done all season. Michel Platini talks mm. sometimes about the, the fact that a, a, a striker has to know how to play a nine and a half. He mm. said. So a little bit you know, in between the lines, between the midfielders mm. and, the, and the central defence. And that's where the threat is. It's where you don't know where to stand and it's where you leave the spaces and, and it's where you, you, you create problems for your own team. And then speaking of Benzema, of course, being probably Real Madrid's biggest threat to Liverpool's defence. Now switching it around, Liverpool's front three, um, that's something that we have definitely enjoyed. If you throw in a certain Luis Diaz there, oh who God. has been so impressive, mm. Rabo, um, just talk to me again about the X factor that he brings and how do Real Madrid deal with this? Well, he's quick, There's, but he's quick with the ball as well. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's, he can run off the ball, but he's also quick with the ball. And he's probably the best of the three at running with the ball. Mane makes runs in behind, Salah makes runs in behind. But in terms of dribbling skills, at pace, Diaz has been the best player this season for them, doing that sort of thing. You've got to show him inside, you know, at times, so the, the next midfield player can come out and, and, and deal with it. You've got to make him go into to, to avenues. You've got to make it difficult for him. 
and stop him getting the ball and getting turned. That's the, that's the key to, to, to stopping Luis Diaz. All this best. sounds, though, easier said than done, Frank. How do you deal with someone like him? Because he's an absolute joy to watch. Well, if, again, it's somebody that the only choice that you have is maybe to anticipate and get the ball before he gets it. Mm. Uh, that's maybe the only only chance that you have. But he knows how to ask for the ball, you know, short and go behind you. And because he's, he's mm. fast, you're going to, you know, step back you know, as anticipation. And then he's going to get the ball short. Then he's going to face you. And the guy is skinny, but he's strong. <laughs> no, no, really. You and see, full you, of you, energy. Yeah. He does not stop. I want to know what he it's has for, for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Probably arepas. Yeah, we have to <laughs> check that out. But no, but again, we talk about talents. Yeah. And you have to mm. accept the fact that you won't win every battle. But if you win the war, that's fine. <laughs> I remember just watching him in the FA Cup final and somebody had tweeted, it's like Luis Diaz has four lungs because this kid just does not stop running. With that said then, I think every day now we're just going to ask you guys for predictions because uh, as the news keeps coming out, we'll see if any predictions change. Frank, let's start with you. Well, I have to, I have to go to Liverpool. Uh, as uh, as uh, Sir said, yeah. uh, Sir. Uh, Sir said, <laughs> uh, if, uh, if they played fully fit with Fabinho and, uh, and Thiago Alcantara, I see a uh, 3-1 for Liverpool. Oh, we don't even need extra time or pens. I, I'm going to go with a very similar score. I'm going to go 2-1 to Liverpool, and I think for exactly the same reason we talked about, they've got more pace in the side. I think they play, they press the ball. They might catch Real Madrid out by catching them on the ball high up the field. I think they've got players that can run in behind Real Madrid. Alaba might not be fully fit, so there's another player that could be, a, a, not a liability, but could be exposed. Liverpool 2-1. Liverpool, both of them are going for what Liverpool indeed. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not revealing my prediction. She said Manchester United Just, to win. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even pick Manchester United to win a match these days, much less the Champions League final. Oh, we miss those glory days. But anyways, you know we love to get creative when it comes to predictions for the Champions League final. And we had a, a fun day today, a nice little feature that you guys should look out for. It's coming up tomorrow without giving anything away, guys. No, I won't. How no. we picked the winner. Um, how was it today? It was quite fun. We made some croissants. <laughs> That's Did I say time. it right? No, but I love the cliche that American people do about the French people. <laughs> you know, even my producer said, can you come with your beret, you know? Oh. <laughs> and I say, well, you know, I don't have a beret. But uh, I, it was a very nice experience because I didn't know how to do pain, pain au chocolat or croissant. And now I know. So oh. my, I'm going to bake some, uh, some oh, croissant. All I would say, chocolate. Alexis, you and I were listening to what the woman was telling us. Yes. Somebody wasn't listening. He was off doing other things. You yeah, know, Fra it, Frank it, didn't pay any attention. The, the fact that he has French blood, he says, I don't need to listen to instructions. No, of course not. I'm just going to make know. it. That's French people. We all know about everything. Well, as I said, Kay, you can definitely see these guys in some aprons, myself included, but mainly it was about them. And you can see who ended up winning that battle of the croissants and pan au chocolats. It's coming up on ESPN FC tomorrow. In the meantime, it's back to you, Kay. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.